Marsha. Ya Benny Chizrick, Hester. Sing along. Hello. Hi. Cool submarine. Yeah, my submarine lunchbox. Well, welcome, welcome to Yellow Submarine Kids. Say hi to Turkey. Hello, Turkey. Hello, Turkey. How are you? Well, we're here today. Oh, Mr. Tola came on. He says we have to take care of the worms today because we didn't. Yeah, it's a lunchbox. I use it for my purse. And um, it finally stopped being able to close properly. It fits all of my stuff. People laugh all the time because, yes, I know, we're going to take care of the earthworms. Just a minute. Okay, he wants to say hi to everyone. This is Tola, the earthworm puppet. And as you can see, he doesn't have any um, eyes or ears, but just a mouth. And that's how he is the most important creature on this whole earth. Without him, thank you so much. It's very kind. Tola is actually a Hebrew word because I tried to find the oldest word that I could for worms. And because uh, worms have been around since the beginning, it's T-O-L-A. Yeah, Tola. And the other nice thing about that name is, um, you know, is he a boy or a girl? If you know anything about earthworms, they are both at the same time. They're mom and dad at the same time. So uh, he wants us to help take care of the worms. This is something he wants you to see. This is the earthworms caring for the earth. We care. It's a worm wrapped around. Ahmed, yes. Nice to meet you. I have another friend named Ahmed in Turkey that plays violin and lots of amazing instruments. And uh, we're kind of friends, although he can't speak English and I can't speak Turkish, but I use my translator and I say a few things to him. So. Anyway, this is a kid's show too. Ole! Yes, so uh, we are going to do two things. One thing we're going to do. Thank you so much. <laughs> so friends are uh, tweeting out what I'm doing right now because this is a kid's show. I've been playing violin since I was seven, since I was a little kid. I chose it. I played piano for about a year. And I... Uh, all right, I know, I know. Uh, and then I just didn't like the fact that you couldn't carry a piano around. I grew up in England, but I was born in Los Angeles. My mother's a singer, jazz singer, so she took us to England where I went to boarding school uh, for many, many years. Uh, off and on at first, I came back to LA for a while, moved back to England as an adult, uh, played on records, toured almost all of the Western world uh, with my violin and America and uh, England and Ireland many times in bands and uh, then had a child who's now getting to be 25. He's 25 years old. Hi, I, I went spent a lot of time. You know, I love Brighton because uh, when I was in boarding school, we used to do these things called midnight walks. Hi, Patterns on Walls. Nice to see you. We did these things called midnight walks where we would, uh, I'd wear my overalls because of lots of pockets, and we would walk from my school, which was in Sussex, about halfway between London and Brighton. And uh, we would walk all night long and go to Brighton and, we, and the, by dawn we'd get there. So it was a lot of fun. I love those midnight walks. Anyway, they also met us at different spots with our um, ordnance survey maps and they would give us snacks and things so we could keep going. Anyway, on to the kids show. What we want to do is I want to feed the turtle because it's really fascinating to see the kind of food. Hi, throw my way. Uh, do you know? Yes, I know where Cuckfield is. We were in Forest Row, which you may have heard of. It's, it's near East Grinstead on the A23, I believe, Brighton Road. That's where my school was. Anyway, let's get on with it. I want to show you uh, not only the worms, but first I want to start out by showing you my lovely tortoise. <laughs> you know where that is. My lovely tortoise, Walter. This is Walter. Hi, Walter. Good morning. Good morning. I have some yummy food for you. You'll be so amazed when you see. Hi, Walter. There he is. Walter loves kale. Okay. Yeah, Bonnie. All right. And you're from Turkey? Did you live in England? This is Walter, little guy. I'm going to put him on this uh, stand here and put it out here in the sand. And we're going to give him, this is what he loves right here, kale. So we're going to give him some kale to eat. Oh, there you go, buddy. Sorry for startling you. Going to give him some kale. And the other thing that he really loves is endive. Belgian endive. He dropped it on the ground, but that's okay. He's 
he's the main one that eats it. So he's thinking about it. There's some endive, my friend. Whoops. There we go. Oh, you lived in Cuckfield. All right. Very cool. So a shameless plug for Trader Joe's. The other thing he likes to eat, I get these uh, Belgian endives from there. I get the kale from there. And I also get these uh, microgreens, which he likes, which are really good for you, by the way. It's little tiny plants like uh, broccoli, kohlrabi, that they sprout. And then... Uh, and then they don't grow to the full plant, but they have more nutrition. Oh, and Lewis, yes. Okay, so we'll watch him, see if he's going to eat anything. Yesterday, he went crazy for the endive. Come on, buddy. You going to eat something? Okay, well, maybe you just don't feel comfortable on that big thing there. So I'm going to put you down here and see if you want to eat something. He loves to crawl around and get free, and although his aquarium is pretty, pretty nice, he's got plenty of room in there for a little guy. Oh, here he goes. That's one of your favorites, Walter. So say hi to Walter as he devours this uh, <laughs> and dive. Whoa. Oh, I know, I know. We got to take care of the earthworms. Hey, Hal. How are you doing? Great to see you here. My uh, Tola. Oh, yeah, Izmir. Well, okay, I've only been as far as Hungary. There's Walter. Thank Hester. Uh, Kathy. And uh, hello, Hal. How are you guys doing today? You doing pretty well? It's kind of overcast here. i got to go take care of my mom, take her to get a chest x-ray. Uh, so I, I'm not going to have a very long scope. Oh, thank you for the hearts. Anyway, Mr. Walter's going to devour that, and we have a little job to do because my little earthworm Puppetola, who also loves Walter, gave him a kiss, it wants us to help take care of the worms. Okay, hang on a minute. I will follow you now. Let's see. There you are. Okay. Do you scope, Mr. Amit? I hope you do. I hope you're going to scope. Oh, good and rainy. Oh, I wish we had rain here. Anyway, here we're going to, we did a little of this the other day. We're going to check in on our earthworms because Tola says they need some attention because we haven't looked at them. Okay, so here we go. We're going to have a look. This is some of the bedding that we made last time. See how they've been doing. Oh, wow, this little piece of cabbage has started to sprout. How about that? So we're going to move this aside. Look at, wow, they've pretty much eaten all the food that we put in there last time. And there's some worms right at the top going for it. See that? There we are. Some, whoa, you are a fast one. He's crawling right out of my hand before I can, <laughs> look at that. He's super fast. Says, I don't like to be outside of the dark and damp place. He's a long one. Oh, well, I love you worms. Do you realize guys, worms are the most important creatures on this earth. I wanted to put it in my title, but there's not enough room. Worms make garbage, make yummy. They're yummy to a fish. Worms take garbage like old scraps and leaves and everything that's rotting and they eat it, they pass it through their bodies and what comes out is the most wonderful amendment. Yes, and, and bees are the other one. And I have a book called Give Bees a Chance and a song too, and a video, you can find it on YouTube, Give Bees a Chance Song that uh, I wrote. That's my latest book. It's just an ebook right now. I have uh, three books uh, for, uh, for kids. One's called The Earthworm Book, right there. And it's got a CD, so it has a narration of the book. It's got uh, other music, a dance, and a song about earthworms. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Um, I give presentations at schools uh, about these books, about earth-friendly subjects, about uh, the soil, the earth, about uh, solar panels and where they belong, not to harm the desert or harm the animals through uh, the so-called green industry does harm things. And so we need to teach our kids that we don't want to do that. We want it to be uh, everything work together. And then Give Bees a Chance is my helping, how we can all help with the bees. So pretty soon here, because we have a lot of this uh, worm uh, castings, we call it, or uh, some people call it vermicompost. Verm, verm is just a 
a Latin word for a worm. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, thank you. These worms are eating up all this garbage, but what happens is you, you make newspaper for bedding, and after a while the bedding starts to disintegrate. So what we need to do, I started it. Green is only a color, yeah. Unfortunately, some green stuff is not as good. Oh, thank you, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, I have come to many schools and, and uh, given presentations on, on the, the earthworms and what they do and how to build a worm box with the kids. So my book tells you exactly how to do that. It's really easy. So I'm going to prop up my tripod here, right here. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to take just regular newspaper and we're going to uh, tear it into long strips. So you just tear it along the grain like this in long strips. You can figure out which part side of the newspaper for the kids so that they're successful at ripping it into long strips. And then we're going to kind of rub it together to separate the pieces and put it in the water. So we're just going to rip up a few more, so bear with, bear with us. But we have five people on here. That's fantastic. Invite your friends. Share the replay on Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, my Twitter account is the same as my Periscope. It's it's at Lovely Previn. What am I doing? Okay, I am creating, I'm, I'm preparing and making bedding for the worms, especially during the summer. You need to help them stay in the dark and damp. And the way you do that, thank you. The way you do that is you take newspaper. You can use cardboard. You can use uh, corrugated cardboard, lots of other things. But newspaper, there's a lot of it around, and it doesn't cost anything. And kids love to, when you hand them a bunch of newspaper and ask them to tear it into long strips, they go crazy. They love it. So I dampened the newspaper, I squeezed it out so it's not so it's damp, not too wet. Because the other thing about earthworms, if you see them out on the, the uh, pavement or on the sidewalk, and that means they're usually waterlogged, they have too much water. Hey, Christine. And so, you know, we just need to put them back in the soil. So now you just kind of sprinkle it so that it separates out again. We're gonna sprinkle it over the, the worm box to give them more area where they can crawl up to the food and uh, and eat because if they don't like to be exposed they live underground so when you have to create kind of a, a, a you know different layers so that they can feel safe to come up and eat but these are the ones I've done a really great job we fed them a couple of uh, sometime last week I think and really it's, I don't see really anything anything left. I just see some very happy earthworms in there. See them? Okay. Hello, Jenny in Florida. Hello. Yeah, so the other thing is it's getting to be summer, so we want to know how to do this because uh, no, I'm not married. Um, I have been. I have a son, but uh, yeah, I'm a musician. Uh, I play violin, as you know, and uh, I do a lot of things, and uh, you know, I guess it would take a special... Okay, what do you feed them? Okay. Um, in my book, I tell you all about that. If you... Uh, if I'm going to... What I'm going to do is... I always give a code. My 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 uh, scope today said that you could win a book. So what we want to do is... Um, I'll tell you what they feed them in just a second. I'm going to put a code in. Here's our... Here's my tortoise, Walter, eating endive and kale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a code to you guys. If you tweet me, again, go to my Twitter account. If you have a Twitter account or even if you don't, I think you can go in there and send a tweet to at Lovely Previn. It's the same one as here on Periscope, at Lovely Previn. And my Instagram is Lovely Previn Publications. Oh, that's my dog, my dog's bowl, by the way. Uh, and, and just put in the word sprout or sprouts. If you put in the word sprouts, I will send you one of my Walter Tortoise books for free. Just uh, put in the word sprout and then uh, your email and that way we can communicate. Ooh, where's he going? Then we can communicate and I'll get an address and if I see that you've put in the word sprouts or you can send your replay, share the replay with others. If the, on the replay they go to my Twitter at Lovely Previn and put in sprout, I will send you a free book. Now, as far as feeding them, you feed them any kind of vegetable scraps or fruit scraps, except they don't like onion or garlic, which is too strong. Uh, they will crawl away from that. 
They also they also don't like oranges or lemons or any citrus. That oil is too strong. As we know, you use that for cleaning supplies. So that's what we use for cleaning. So they don't like oranges or lemons or limes or any uh, grapefruit or any any of those kind of skins. And they don't like oranges, uh, garlic or onions. But they'll have anything. And also another tip, which we did a while back in a, another Yellow Submarine Kids, was we put in coffee grounds. So even tea bags, you can open them up. I recommend opening the tea bags, but use tea and coffee, especially coffee grounds. They grow their eggs. They, they lay their eggs. And last time I put coffee grounds in, I opened it up and there were millions of little teeny weeny little worms that had hatched. So you want to keep your worm box going. So that's another way. And then what we're going to do a little bit later on. Yes. Uh, thank you. Babs, Babs Blue. Babs Blue. Babs Blue. And uh, what what they like, uh, what we're going to do soon is we're going to empty the box, and I'll show you how to harvest all the worm castings. I just put all my worm castings in all of my plants in my patio here. So they're going to be very happy because that soil has something called humus, which is a living property of the plant, which the plant can take up into its roots very easily. Hey, there's my friend. Yeah, we're just... Uh, looking at the worms and we were also watching the tortoise. I got to go take care of my mom. Good afternoon, Rev Beach. Nice to see you. I was just showing them my tortoise. He, he's, uh, he was eating. Hi, Rev. Come on. He was eating some endive and some kale. Thank you for the hearts, guys. And now he's, uh, he's, he's out of his cage, so he's checking it out. But he absolutely loves endive. Are you still hungry, buddy? That's Walter the tortoise. Yep, he still loves the, that, and he loves kale, and I give him uh, sprouts. No, <laughs> no. well, there's lots of X-rated action in the worm box, but we don't see it very often. Uh, and, you know, the, the most unique and wonderful thing about worms, as I've said, is that they are mom and dad at the same time. They, uh, that's how I explain it in my book for kids. They are mom and dad at the same time, and that's how they, they go. They just need to see each other and they can make babies. So they are unique and they are the most important creature on the whole earth because without them, our plants wouldn't be able to grow and be healthy because they have the most important, hi Sarah Raps, uh, they have the most important uh, property that they, that they create in the soil, living soil. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, I was, uh, I was going to say, we have a code on here. You'll have to watch the replay now or share the replay because I gave a code so that you could win one of these Walter Tortoise books. And uh, we've been reading about the tortoises. We, we took care of uh, Rev because you just came. I'm Alicia Previn. I'm the author of, of three books for kids. I give presentations at schools. My latest one is called Give Bees a Chance. And uh, it's on Apple iBooks. It's, a, it's an e-book. I don't have it in print yet. Uh, but we made some new bedding, Rev, for the for the worms, and we took a look at the worms, and here they're doing incredibly well. They've eaten almost everything, so tomorrow we're going to have to feed them some more food again. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking. Yeah, I know, poor Rev. He had he had his uh, video blocked last night because he said X-rated frogs, and uh, somebody kind of made a mistake there and didn't realize that it was the thing that would be inappropriate for anyone to look at. Just frogs in love, making more frogs. Oh, thank you, Rev. Okay. Well, so uh, we've already been reading in the book, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly recap to where we are, and then I've got to go take care of my mom. And uh, later on, though, just for you music fans out there, um, later on I'm going to do my uh, Scope for Good at the hospital, so there'll be some wonderful music from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, played on piano, violin, and uh, cello, and it's really fun. Yes, I'm going to play the violin a little later. I would do more this morning. I usually play for the opening. I play Yellow Submarine for our Yellow Submarine kids. And there's the Yellow Submarine. <laughs> but right now, I'm just going to a uh, little book reading because that's part of the kids' show, okay? So the, the tortoise is called a teacher in the uh, American Indian culture because they live to 100 years old. And uh, so they have seen more of the world than everyone else. So he calls a meeting of all the desert animals and he explains to them that there's something going on. Uh, their friend Walter Tortoise, thank you, Rev. Our friend Walter Tortoise has been taken uh, by the two-legged and uh, we need to help him. And there's something going on in the desert. 
There's lots of dust at the end of the desert here, and this is really going on in our California deserts. This is a, a nonfiction book, but it's told with the voices of the animals that, um, that the, uh, they're putting in solar panels, all millions and the millions and millions in all of our pristine desert. And the animals are worried because they're being relocated and many are dying because they're flying into the solar panels and the wind uh, turbines. And so uh, Walter Tortoise has been taken and Old Tortoise remembers how they worked well together with when the two-legged first came. And that now they started to um, just want bigger TVs and, and uh, more uh, bigger electricity and energy. So they put these mirror boards up there. So then there it shows Walter Tortoise in the cage. I know, solar is good, and I say that it's good in the book, but it just it needs to be on already distressed land. Hi, Swan 196. Uh, it needs to be on already distressed land or on our rooftops, where we're gonna use it, not miles away in our beautiful, pristine desert. People think there's nothing there. There are botanists and biologists that have been studying it for years, and there's a beautiful richness there. That's why I used a photograph of the desert Yes, because it's so beautiful, and I just drew the pictures of the creatures on there, and I used a photo, good old Photoshop to put them together. I wanted people to see how beautiful the desert really is. So after the meeting, Eagle goes to talk to uh, somebody named Senor Alfredo, who uh, remembers the language they can communicate from the old Mexican-American ways, and he agrees to help speak to the big people that are making these decisions and call up somebody who's making a show about the desert. And so this is what we would be exchanging, this beautiful, beautiful desert for this. So that's what this book is about. Then Eagle goes to, uh, he knows where some mischievous ravens that know all about the two-legged are, and uh, they're playing with some keys. And there's some, there's some humor in the book too. We'll go over it another time. The desert is full of life, that's correct. So. So here's a meeting where they're deciding what to do to what, rescue Walter and uh, Kit Fox. There he is. There's, um, those are uh, Chuck Wallace. There's some very unusual animals in the desert that I learned about and wrote about that are incredible. Uh, so here's the ravens. They're a little afraid of rattlesnake, but they know that humans hate rattlesnakes, so they come up with a plan. And um, then this is uh, Senor Alfredo. So this is where we left off. I'm going to read one page, and then I've got to go. And we're dwindling down. There's only a few people left, so uh, share the replay. Uh, you think you own whatever land you land on. Colors of the wind. Oh, that's beautiful, Rep. Thank you. So, the ravens offer to distract the two-legged long enough to grab Walter Tortoise. And Kit Box says that he will uh, he'll sniff out and let everyone know when the two-legged is coming. So this part, the phone is ringing in Alfredo's ear. Hello, Bob. Alfredo here. Can we talk? Are you busy? Now this Bob here over here is my uh, kind of uh, Ed Begley Jr. guy. Bob is breathing hard. Uh, actually, I'm making a film for TV, uh, riding my indoor bicycle, pedaling enough to make energy to uh, toast some bread. What's up? Alfredo thanks Bob for being a good example of using energy wisely. He explains the danger to the desert life. We won't need to ruin life there if humans are living, are learning wise energy use, saving energy everywhere we live, like you, Bob. Education is what matters, Bob replies, which is why I'm setting an example in this movie about lots of ways to save energy and that we don't think about. Anyone who watches can learn cheaper, easier, smarter choices. So, the next part is about Walter's rescue. So we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining. Um, the Yellow Submarine Kids, say goodbye to Walter. There's Walter, he's crawling around, checking things out. Oh, okay, The Colors of the Wind. Yeah, I will learn that song on the violin. Yes, I will. And uh, good old Tola wants to say goodbye. So, there he is. He says, thank you so much for helping care for the worms. He's very happy. I can't wait. He says he's happy to hear that song too. So we're going to say goodbye for now from the Yellow Submarine Kids. Hope you have a lovely day. We'll see you tomorrow around the same time. 
for another Yellow Submarine Kids show. Meanwhile, share the replay, look for the code, and you can win a free book. Love you. Bye.